Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmar again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm going to continue the AR videos. We did an example previously where I use AR foundation to do item selection on multiple spheres. So this time I'm going to add a feature to it where we can actually add an overlay on each sphere as we're selecting each sphere and basically display its name. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you what we're going to be doing in this lesson, which is to show an overlay above the spheres that we're selecting. So we're going to be using text mesh for that. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my scenes and we're going to be looking at the scene where we added the selection. So by now you probably saw that I have a lot of different examples. And just to reiterate, these examples are in GitHub and you can download it for free. So I'm going to double click on the selection one. And you can see that I have multiple spheres in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically clone this one. That way you can still test the other scene without the changes that we're making on this video. So this one is going to be called selection and overlay text. There we go. I just hit reload. It'll reload the scene with that new name. Perfect. So what I want to do is I want to I want to basically show a name of on each one of these. So I'm going to be adding a placeholder for to the placement object so that we can specify a name. We could modify this name, but I want to I want to leave these ones as they are. And I also want to show you how we can add more properties to this object. So I'm going to open the placement object and we're going to be also storing the overlay that we're going to create in this object. So the first thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and make this one private. And let me close this and reopen it. Looks like my intelligence wasn't loading. Sometimes I have to do that. There we go. And serialize fill. All right. And then I'm also going to do a game object. This one is going to be for the overlay. So let's just call this one overlay text. There we go. And lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to also expose a new property for the name that we want to display on the overlay. So what I'm going to do for this one is we're just going to do a string stream overlay text we can just say name or instead we can say overlay display text. I think that makes more sense. Okay, and we have a setter and a getter. So then I'll just serialize this one as well. The We can also serialize this one. I think that's fine. I'm debating whether we do a game object or I actually do the, the text, text mesh. Let me Let's actually do that. So this will be the text me mesh. I have, I have a hard time pronunciating that word for some reason, but you know what I mean. It's the, the text mesh that we're going to be including for the text. All right. So everything here looks fine and I think I'm good. So now what I'm going to do is let's see. Oh, this is just complaining about, about these being private. So we can just do public bull select it and we can just say get return and then this one will be this is selected so we'll just add a, a quick property there and there we go and then just, let's just say select it we can just fix those issues it looks like i do need to make it a setter as well so let's go back and i'll just do set and then a selected. There we go. I think that should get us compiling now. Yep. And everything works now. Awesome. So that error should go away. And it did go away. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the properties that we just added. So let's make sure that they did get loaded. And looks like they didn't get loaded. Let me go and check the script really quick. Oh, it looks like I make these ones properties where they actually should be fields. Except for this one, which I 
can I could just make that one private as well and and I can serialize it as well I think that's fine let's go ahead and go back into unity and let's make sure that everything recompiles okay now we can see the the text that is loading all right so what I want to do is I want to name each one of these ones we can say that this one is the large sphere and we can call it one then these ones are going to be small so just basically call them a small and then we can give them na a numbers to each one of them so i'm just going to say that one is one this one is two this one is three and lastly this one is going to be fourth the the other thing that i want to do in code is i want to assign the text mesh programmatically so let's go ahead and do that and to do that, let me make sure that I get the settings right. So I'm going to add it manually, and then we'll add it through code. So what I'll do is, let's go ahead and open it. Open the prefab, and then we can focus on what we need to do here. All right, so we'll need to add a 3D Text Mesh Pro component. And it's going to be huge because this is basically in AR, we're basically dealing with meters, and you want to make sure that you make it, you know, you make the spheres as the real world sizing is so we want to make sure that we resize the text mesh because it's too big and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let me go ahead and go into 2d mode and there we go it's just loading all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize it here and then we'll come back through and I think something like that should work then what I'll do is I'll just do let's us, us align it on the middle and also vertical align it now that option this option right here and then what i'll do is the grid is also way too big let me see yeah it's way way too big so we can just resize it to be something like you know that only covers the text maybe a part of the text maybe something like that will work let's just change the x and y okay now we can go closer I think it's still too big, so let's go down to, and that's one of the advantages of using Text Mesh Pro. Like even if you go small, the te the text is still gonna be super clear. So I think that works. And let's see, it's just thinking for some reason. There we go. And then I'm just gonna make it a little smaller. A little the width is gonna be adjusted. Okay, so now we can just do zero zero. And we can adjust the position on Y. I think let's do 1.5. I think 1.5 works. And let's go ahead and get closer. So I think what I'm going to do instead of doing it through code, I'm just going to do it like this because it's going to, especially with the sizing, you could we could do it through code since we have all the options. But I think this will make it easier for me to do it through this lesson without taking too long of your time. So yeah, I think that I think that works. Then we can just say this is the placeholder or this is gonna be the text. And we can just call this one overlay text. Alright, I think that that works. And and I like the color. I think the color is fine. Let's say that we make this larger sphere large one. Yep. So I think the sizing is, is perfect. So I'm just going to copy that because we're going to need it on the, on the large one. For the smaller one, we can now do an overwrite. And it's going to apply to every single one of them. And that's what you can see now being done. So what I want to do is when this gets created, I don't want to show it. I only want to show it when an item is selected. So let's go ahead and add the one for the large one. And then we'll go back through and fix it and fix the logic in the code. So I'm just going to open this one and basically do the same thing except this one is going to be the offset and why it's going to be much larger because the the size of the sphere is a lot larger so we can do let's do point let's see point nine no point eight okay we'll just manually i think that 0.75 works all right now we can go back and then we can just basically click over right to apply to the prefab and then we should be good to go with every one of them Awesome. So then the next thing that I'll do is let's go into the placement prefab. And you know that I have that component already associated. So what I what I want to do is 
because this placement object, remember, is used by other things. Let's make sure that we're only using it appropriately so it doesn't break our, our previous code. So what I'll do is on the awake method here, awake, and we can just go ahead and, and I don't need to specify private, we can just say void awake. So we can just say that if, we can try to the, get the component first, so we can say overlay text is gonna be get component in children, remember because we put that in the children, touch mesh, so if we do have that component in the children, this should come back as a, with a variable. And basically with a reference to that component, we assign the variable. If not, then we won't get it, which is fine. This is going to be null. So, but if we, but if it's not null, I want to, I want to deactivate it because I want to use it just when the user is selecting it. So we're just going to say overlay text game object and then we can just say active and then we just set it to false or we can just call the method set active there we go and that should work so that should basically yeah so that should basically allow us to check okay if it has been set and we do have an overlay text we want to basically disable it which is perfect. So now the next thing that I need to do is I need to create it because I haven't created it. So what I want to do too is I don't want to have to create these on on the ones that we're not using it. So I'm going to add another property here says should I add should I create or let's see let's call it let's call it create overlay should I create overlay and then we can set it to false by default that way it doesn't break the previous the previous scenes and we'll do just close out of this we'll make it also serializable and let's just move it up i'm going to copy all of these variables and then let's just put them right here there we go i think that looks more appropriate and then what i'll do is because that has been created so the problem that i have is if you want to display it or not so maybe what we do is because this is always going to be created we always set it to false and only on the only on the items where we set the property select the true then we display so i don't think there's really a need for this anymore because only when we set this to true is when we're going to be displaying the overlay so we can just add another method here saying public void and then because we have a set to select it so now i'm thinking that what we can do instead of doing this we can say if is selected let's do it in the setter if is selected equal true then we make the overlay text visible so what we can do is we can actually just do this I'm thinking about it as I'm, as I'm coding and this is this this is making more sense. So what we're going to do is when we set that property to true or false, so if it's true, we're going to set this overlay to basically basically to active. Otherwise, we're going to set it to inactive so that we're going to we're not going to show it. Okay, so everything here looks looks fine and okay, so yeah, I think I think this should work now. So the the only thing that I want to make sure that I text is that it doesn't show when when we first open it up so let me go ahead and all right i think it's fine if it shows up at the beginning but then when the awake method gets executed they should all go away and it looks like we're getting a null reference exception to the overlay text because the property is getting executed let me see overlay text it's getting set at this point we're getting the children in the component of type okay so i think this is fine let me try something here overlay text text okay i do have the the proper the proper component so let me let me check a couple things here let me just make sure that this is not getting executed before and that this one is not get execute they got executed at the right order 
So I'm gonna go into, so this is a good thing because I can show you the debugging. So it's gonna debug it. I'm gonna hit play and let's see what happens. And it looks like this one is getting executed first, just like we thought. But the component, we didn't get the component. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this. Let's go back, look at the children, which is this guy. And let me make sure that I do have the Okay, I think the component that I need to bring is te text mesh pro instead of just text mesh. I think that's the problem. So let's go ahead and do change that. And it's going to complain because the using is not included. All right, so I think that should work now. Let me go ahead and post a uh, click on play again to stop it. And we can clear all our errors and then hit play. And there we go. And we're still we're still getting exceptions. So I'm gonna do that one more time. Because now we should have them in children's because the children's are. So this is the parent. We should be going and we did get it. Oh look, so we did get the property. So let me see what else is happening here. It's complaining about okay. That's fine. Let's go ahead and debug it. And I'm going to hit play. All right, so we're getting it. And we should have the component now. And looks like we did get the component. Then we're going in and we're saying, OK, set it to active, inactive, which is perfect, because that's what I want to do in the awake. I'm also getting it on this one. OK. Should get it on every single one of them. OK, I'm just going to hit play. At this point, this is also set. The game object is set. Okay, so I think everything is set. And I don't think we're getting any errors anymore. So that probably, let me clear everything out. And yep, let's go ahead and do it. And let's go ahead and hit play one more time. And looks like for some reason we are getting null initially. So let's go ahead and change this. Let's not do it in the property. Let's go ahead and do it as a, and I think this is a good practice anyway. So show overlay. And we can just say, we can say toggle overlay and then if it's selected, then we show it. If it's not selected, then we don't show it. And then what I can do is I can go back into our other script. So let me go ahead and hit stop here. And I'm going to go into the script where we're setting it. We can say current toggle. We can do it right at the end since we this is already known so if it's selected or not. OK, so I think that should work. I don't see anywhere else. So let me go ahead and hit play and make sure that we're clean. And then what I'll do next is I'll show it in my device as we're running it. And I'm still getting an error, which is really strange because that property has been set. And interesting. I wonder if I have one that doesn't have one of those components. This one has an overlay text, TextMess Pro. OK, and this one also has it. This one also has it. Every single one of them have it, which is really strange. So let's do something else to try to find out if we have an error. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my debugger. And let me do a couple of things just to make sure that I know, I know the name of this. So this is going to be game object name okay and then we'll just put a breakpoint here then what I'll do is let me see I want to see the exception breakpoints it looks like we are let's see let's go ahead and bring in the one that we throw when we have an exception with an all exception so I'm just gonna say see if this works if it doesn't work okay that should work and 
Let's try without a breakpoint and see if that breaks at the point of an all. And then we can just hit play here. And it looks like it did because we were breaking only when we have an exception. All right, so this guy right here, interesting. This one is currently set to null, even though even though we should have one for every single one of them. I think I found the problem, guys, where we were getting an all exception. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this a little bit. Let me go into, because right now, if you notice, I'm changing, I'm calling this change selection object. And it's also happening in the awake. So, but the other one it's happening is getting initialized in the awake as well. So I want to make sure that this happens either after or we change the way that we're doing this. So I'm going to just basically call this one on, on start. And we can see if that improves. And we can just say, there we go. Let me go back into Unity and then let's hit play and see if we get errors this time. And it looks like everything everything is clean. And we're not showing we're not showing the text for the other ones, but it looks like we're still showing the text for the for the large one. So let me make sure that I know why that is. Because I it looks like oh I see what's happening. So let me make sure. Oh no, and that's actually the that's actually the behavior that we want. We only want to show the text for the one that is selected. By default, the the big one is going to be selected. So so that's perfect. So then the next thing that I need to do is on the toggle, I want to display the name. So I'm going to do the basically the display text. It's going to be placed in the overlay text. Now let's go back through and hit and go back into Unity, hit play. And that should now be showing the name that we set. It looks like we're showing the name that we set. So if I were to go to the other ones and set this one, it should set basically show, it should be active and then show the label that we set. So it looks like we have a little typo there on large. And let me just make sure that I fix that. Then I think the other ones also need to be changed. So I just fix that. This happens when you record videos very early in the morning. <laughs> All right, so that should be good. And then we should be able to, to run it in our device and see how that looks. OK, so I think I'm happy with those changes. I also want to make sure that I didn't break anything previous. So let's go back into the selection scene. And let's make sure that we're not basically blowing up now like it doesn't have an error and we're looking at the selection scene so i'm just gonna hit play and it looks at the selection scene also got the the changes that i made so except it doesn't have the corrected value so let me go back into selection and overlay and we can apply we can apply those changes also those changes Go back to selection. I do want to save the changes. And it looks like we now have the changes in place. So let me look at the implementation here again, just to make sure. And if it doesn't equal null, we set it to false. So, but then the toggle, oh, I see what's happening. Because we're always, we're still doing, I mean, we're still doing that through here. And we could just leave it in there and I think, or we can add a property here. We can just add a property. Let's say private bool. Should should I display overlays? And then we can just say false. And then that way the other the other scene works the way that this was that it was working originally. So when you watch the video, or if you haven't, if you already watched the video, it's okay. But for the people that haven't watched it, they might get confused. We can just say display overlay. Okay, so it's set to false. And then we can just say if display overlay is set to true, then we show it. So now we should be able to go back to my original scene selection. And then it shouldn't show. It's okay if it shows like that right now. 
But then, yeah, there we go. That's what I, that's what I want it. And then on this one, we should see it because, well, actually you won't see it because I haven't set that property to true. So in this scene, I need to set that property. And that's what I'm gonna do here. And now we can hit play. And this one, this one should, uh, should now show it. All right, so it looks like that's working. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna build this. And I want to add a new open scene. There we go. Hit build. And it's building, there we go, it's about to build. This one is going to be selecting objects as well. So I'm just gonna, let's just reuse that name. Hit save. And let me go back. Yes, I do wanna append it. It's faster when you do it this way. If you already have a build that was created previously. All right, so this is gonna build, and what I'll do is I'll continue on once I have it in my device and running. All right, guys, so it looks like this is almost done here installing. So I wanna show you how it looks in my device. So it should be, there we go, now it's running. So it should be opening now in my iPhone. Just give it a few more seconds. Looks like it's running. Now we should be able to see the Unity logo coming up. And we can see the that that object has an overlay. So I'm gonna go back a little bit and dismiss this. And we can see we have multiple spheres. And I can select that one. And the text is really large, we can fix that. But I'm going to stand up and just show you how that looks. All right guys, so I think that's everything that I wanted to show you. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know. Also be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Either you're starting out or you're an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. And also find me Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. And I'm also posting early access to source code and the address of my GitHub repos. Thank you very much, guys.